A warm welcome to everyone. This is our the second of our three CPD sessions for Craft School Material World, developed to enhance your time with us and support you to deliver Craft School with your students. I'm Jaren Hayward and I'm our Education Manager at the Crafts Council and joining us today as well is Faith Rubia, our Learning and Sector Support Coordinator. For each session, we invite an education specialist to share their insights into sustainability or craft teaching alongside a craft professional who will deliver a make-along workshop based on one of our three themes, renewable materials, reclaim and reuse and creative mending. Today we have a focus on reclaim and reuse. After the first presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions, but we'll be keeping an eye on the chat throughout. For today's make-along session, you should have received a list of materials and tools. If you didn't get a chance to gather these or didn't see the email, please don't worry. You can also watch along and have a go yourself later on. For those taking part, you will have an opportunity to share what you have made at the end of the session, and there will also be time for question and answer. Again, you can add your questions to the chat and Faith and I will keep an eye on them as we go. All three CPD sessions will be recorded so you can play them back at any time. Alongside these, we have our monthly drop-in sessions where you can talk about different aspects of the project in more detail and we just offer friendly support along the way. On Wednesday, the 6th of December at four o'clock, we have another one of those and I hope to see many of you there. Our first presenter today is Janet Douglas and she'll be sharing her experience of designing and delivering craft projects in alternative provision settings. The Craft Council's Make First approach is at the heart of craft school, yet we are mindful that risk-taking, jumping straight in and picking up materials without a fixed plan and working without the fear of making mistakes can feel daunting for teachers and students alike. And this can be applicable in all school settings. Janet's presentation will in part share her own experience of building confidence and core skills, which can then lead on to working with a more experimented approach and more open-ended projects. Janet, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise and experience. I'm going to hand straight over to you so you can say more about yourself and your work. Thanks, Janet. Thank you, Joanne. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to head straight into the slides because um, it's quite visual. Um, so if there's any questions, just put them into the, the chat. This isn't about anybody um, teaching anyone to suck eggs. Um, this is just my experiences and, and some tips. And I hope that helps. So just bear with me a second. Right. OK, so developing craft projects for alternative provision. So this isn't just about alternative provisions. It can be in any kind of setting. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm the founder and CEO of J Douglas Creative Group and Feed My Creative CIC, which is a social enterprise that promotes sustainability with fabrics. I work with young people and adults in community-based initiatives that em emphasise using recycled fabrics and materials. Um, how I work, I provide a platform for discussions and um it's an alternative way of of having conversations without having to speak in front of people, presenting in front of people. Um, I'm very big on sustainable practices anyway. So the I'd say 90% of the work that I do, I use reclaimed materials and whether that's fabric, it's wood or anything else. Um, even in this picture, I've got some speakers that have been made. I reuse the speakers, I reuse um, the fillings I, I reuse anything where possible um, because number one it keeps the cost down and number two it's it's quite a good way of showing people you can actually use what's around you rather than having to spend lots of money um, so yeah so I like to look at sustainable practices I encourage innovation at every stage and I like to combine textiles and technology as well. I have over 30 years of designing and making experience, and that's not just within education. Um, my background is actually fashion and textiles. So I have been sewing, making, designing for, for many years. Okay, so my love of work, or well, my work combines a love of sustainability, clean lines, imaginative storytelling, um, because everything's visual and being able, I like to call myself a creative creative because I like to work differently. If you come to me to do any sessions, it's not about 
showing you how to make cushion covers I'd rather show you what you could make out of a cushion cover and there's a variety of things that you can you can do I like to work specifically with young people that are disengaged in education I was a teacher in secondary schools for 11 years and I found it quite challenging to be able to work with larger groups of students because you have those that are very well able and you know everybody needs to be able to progress throughout the lesson but you'll find that those who are disengaged they get bored quite easily so what I wanted to do when I set up Feed My Creative was to be able to create a platform for them to be creative to be able to look at their skill sets and try and use um, the products around us and the equipment in different ways to make it easier for them to be focused on the work that they was doing. And how I find is if the sessions are therapeutic, you can upskill, you can build on existing skills um, by the work that we, we do. Um, activities for small groups will always get their attention because they haven't got, they're not distracted by everybody else within the classrooms. You look at what resources you can use to keep your cost down. Again, if you can reuse anything, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be things in the home. You can go to the charity shop and get something quite cheap or see what you can get from other companies. For me, my motto is if you don't ask, you don't get. And I've had fabric from, I've had fabric from Ikea. They've been able to donate to me for about six, six, seven years. And you're talking bedding, um, furnishing, fabrics, curtains, that kind of thing. And if you think in, even in a quilt cover, there's quite a lot of fabric in there. And even in a school setting, if your budgets are really tight, using that quilt cover for fabric, you've, you've got a, a good three, maybe four meters in there that you could reuse. And that could be a brilliant project for, for half a term. Um, my one, two, three approach is show and tell. What is it? How do we do it? Let's make it. And it's it's not a case of, you know, there's a long process just for designing. It's a case of, right, I'm going to show you what it is. I'll do a quick demonstration and let's just get on with it. And it's good to have things that you can make and take away in one or two sessions and pre-make it. So the images on the bottom, um, when I was doing some sessions, each of those containers have kits, so everybody has their own equipment. So you don't have to be worrying about um, everybody not having the right amount of, of things to be able to use. All your things, your scissors, your pins, your everything is in, in that container. Right, so what I've decided to do is a few case studies. Um, and this is just to show you the kind of projects that I've been able to do, what the challenge is, what the outcome is, what the results. I'm not going to read through all of them, but I'll just give a quick overview of that. So with this particular case study, I've worked with the Prince's Trust uh, for, I'd say, probably about four years now. And they have to make a fully functional garment using recycled materials. This particular one that you can see was six curtain panels and they had to make 10 aprons that are still being used within the trust now. Or we've used settee covers where they have to unpick them. And when you unpick it, it's not as easy as having a length of fabric because now you've got to unpick it. You've got to find all the best bits from it and you've got to recreate a length of fabric then to be able to create a product. And if you're thinking about with settee covers, there's lots of features on there that you could actually use. Is there zips on there? Can you reuse a zip? Can can something be turned into a pocket? Um, what is the function of the apron? What do you want to use it for? I've had some young people where they've created um, roles for their tools as well. So you've got um, paint brushes or if they do um, crochet or whatever, whatever the need is, they're looking at what is the function of the apron that they have. So it doesn't have to be a standard one that goes around your neck. Is it one that goes around the waist? Has it got clips on there? Has it got vel Velcro on there? So for at the very beginning, you give them an example. Most of them never had any sewing experience at all. But if you, over a four day period, their skill levels increase rapidly because they have to be thinking on their feet all the time, but there's no pressure. They learn from each other. And 
to be able to work together as a team when somebody's got an idea, well, have you thought about that? Have you tried that? And I'll always go around and help them. Um, a lot of the young people that I've worked with at the Trust have now gone on to university or they've done work experience with other design organisations as well. Um, but it's about inspiring them. It's not about, well, I want to do fashion, I want to make clothes. It's about showing them the process behind the making. Uh, so if I move on to the next one, um, this one is it's a hand-drawn e-textiles kit. Now, if budgets are really tight, you don't always have to have things printed onto fabric. You can use something as simple as calico and you can draw with a biro pencil and some pencil crayons. This was a collaboration with a, a Birmingham based artist where she I told her the, the brief. I want it to be about lighthouses um, because I want you to be able to look at yourself. Is there anything that you don't like about yourself? How can we um, how can you move forward? How can you look at positives and the negatives? So if anybody's done anything with um, electronics and conductive thread, in order for a light to work, you've got to have a positive and a negative. And I always say without the positives, the negatives aren't going to work. Without the negatives, the positives aren't going to work. So you need the both positive and a negative to have a positive outcome. So what we would look at is the actual journey. Where is the positive stitching going to go? Where is the negative stitching going to go? And I apologise, I haven't put an example on there. But it's looking at the positives within yourself and the lighthouse being the beacon of hope and light is something that you can have conversations about in terms of building your confidence. While you draw something that's quite simple, you have a theme for anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be plants, it could be flowers, it could be anything. And they draw that and to be able to um, be able to sew with conductive threads and light. Or it's just an exercise where you can just draw on fabric, put it in an embroidery um, ring and then that again that's something that they can actually take away it's all about mindful resources to encourage meaningful conversations there's problem solving and to look at design um, projects going forward as well the next one is this is a project that I did with children's services over um, lockdown and it was a quick project that didn't take too much time. It can have a fun element. There's problem solving. They have to look at risk assessment when they're working and health and safety. So it's not you just telling them this is how you're supposed to be working. This is what you're supposed to do. They have to think about well, what could be the issues if you touch a hot soldering iron. And you can list it. So then they have initially written their own risk assessment. Now, even though this isn't something that's recycled, you can go to companies such as Kitronics if you haven't worked with them before, and they can actually send you out free packs to, to sample, so free sample packs that you can test out. This particular kit, you'll be able to develop ideas on how to work on larger kits. You'll build on the confidence with soldering. I've done this with primary school um, years five and six, um, up to the eldest person that I've worked with is probably about 30. So with the soldering, they have to create these. Um, you can have a starter kit and then to be able to, to create a product that you can then have fun with, they can race them. Um, but once you've got used to the soldering, it just means that we can look at what kits we can do next and what kind of ideas that we can have to build on something with basic kits that you can get from companies such as Kitronics. Next one, sorry if I'm rushing this through, um, heat pads. Now, this for me is always going to be an introductory project. So it's an introduction to sewing. It's just four uh, lines or three lines that you would have to sew. If you've never used a sewing machine or if you haven't used a sewing machine for quite a while, it's a good way to get used to using a sewing machine. The best ways in how to thread it, what the controls are, you have to look at hand sewing, what kind of equipment do you need, looking at sizes and measurements, because that's important to make sure that all the sides fit together. So you learn how to thread a sewing machine, you're troubleshooting with any errors. There's conversations that's going throughout the whole thing. Um, easy ways to thread a needle. Quality control is a big one as well. Is there any threads? Is there anything that could be needed? Do you have to unpick anything? 
and it's suitable for most age groups as well whether you pre-cross it or not it's tactile it can be scented participants can choose the scents and what I've always found is even if you've made one for yourself if there's time there's somebody will always make one for somebody else and it's a good takeaway um, product and you can again use recycled materials you can use what you've got in the, the house it can be a keepsake if you've had somebody for example that's passed away for example you can use a shirt fill it up with um, rice which can be really cheap I've bought that from say Lidl or Aldi cost something like 47 pence and you just three quarters full with rice add some oils to the rice before you put it in and then you've got a scented product that you can use um whether it's for menstrual pain aches um headaches or just something you want to be able to put in the drawer but it's a really good takeaway project for um people to be able to work with and you know you the the fabrics that you can use cottons are always quite good so you can have pillowcases again quilt covers it could be a project working with young people where you say well how many do you think you can get out of a single quilt cover out of a pillowcase and they have to calculate how many they can actually make of the same size so that becomes an a uh, an exercise in making sure measurements are, are right. How much rice do you need as well? So there's there's a lot of elements in being able to do this as an introduction to a project that you could do later along the line. Okay, so last thing from me. So we're looking at short-term and long-term goals. Short-term, create projects that there is always a takeaway. There's always this make first pedagogy where, you know, let's try it out first. Does it is it going to work? Is it not going to work? How can we do it better for the next time? It's always a case of it's good to show what you can do with what you've got. So once you've got a short project, something that's small, what can we do with this to build into something that's bigger? You start looking at their skills to gain confidence, to start projects that could last for a term, maybe two terms, or even possibly for the whole year. You look at development, um, create a booklet so that they can, again, do things at home. Booklets don't have to be big. You could have a task on each page or it could be a work booklet with that. They have to write the risk assessments in there. Um, they have to look at what equipment and resources that they need, any problems that they have. And it's a nicer way to have to fill that out because you've got starter questions um, or Q&As in there that they don't feel um, overwhelmed to have to write on a blank page. Development from this, all participants then can be involved with design development. And it's a reminder that it's not failing, but it's prototyping. Sometimes I will get make mistakes on purpose so they can say, oh, I got it wrong. And think, you know, you can have a laugh and a joke about it. But it's important, especially as educators, that young people within school environment can see that we get things wrong as well and it's okay to get things wrong because that's the question is well, what do we do next this is how we prototype even some of the biggest designers engineers or anybody else in the world they have to prototype and things will always go wrong so make mistakes so that they can see it problem solve all the time ask them a question what if this goes wrong what would we do to fix it it's okay to ask those questions because then they become part of the process in terms of future planning for um, any projects that you do and always look at what have we got at home what can we use um, to be able to keep the cost down um, so yeah thank you there's all my details on the bottom and as I always say to everybody embrace your creativity it's people will say to you that I'm not creative I don't know how to design but everybody can design something, whether you think you're creative or not. Everybody's made something in their life, whether it's in the kitchen or you get a piece of paper and you fold it or you're in meetings and you're feeling a bit bored and, and you start doodling. That's design work. And you can actually transfer that onto fabric and actually make it into something that's worthwhile. So thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. I so enjoyed that. Um, 
and so much there to sort of think around and I really enjoyed what you said about you know making mistakes and the young people to see teachers making mistakes but to embrace it and yeah. the magical moments happen when you know when we fail that's, that's where the magic happens yeah. thanks Janet definitely I'd like to open up to um questions for everybody either in the chat or if you'd like to put your hand up and ask Janet in person please do taking my time looking making sure we don't miss out on anyone Okay, while well, well, we're waiting for them to to come in, Janet, can you tell us a bit more about um, building confidence and when you've sort of seen examples of doing these quite kind of structured make-along activities to then lead on to something that's more experimental and risk-taking and, and, and how the confidence builds? Yeah, if I give an example when I was working with the Prince's Trust, because their age range is from, say, 16. I mean, it's not limited to um, the older um, you know, older young people or teenagers because it could be anybody but when I've worked with the Prince's Trust majority if not all of them have never used a sewing machine before and there's always this thing I show them an example of something that I've done now I've got years of experience so my finish is always going to be um, a lot different and they'll always say but I can't do that and I'll always shut it down it's you I can't is not something that I accept in any of my sessions. And it's it's your tone. It's how you work with people to say, right, let's just give this a go. And when you've got somebody that's never sewn something before, and I said, you're going to make, say, for example, a wash bag, and it's going to have a zip in it. It's almost like this look of horror on their face. Well, no, I can't do that. And I'll just smile and say, yes, you can. And we will be doing it within less than four hours. So when you show somebody especially through the stages, I always feel that the impact is greater in the process than in the final product. There's always going to be, um, there's this, this smile that they always have right at the end, but it's that process when they've done something that they haven't done before. And with the Prince's Trust, when I've worked with them, over a four day period, they've gone from not being able to use a sewing machine to be able to make a fully functional apron that's got pockets on there that might have zips on there. They might have done some that's got frills. So the amount of skills that they can pick up in whether or not it's a day or a four day um, period, you can see that their confidence has grown and the looks on their face, you can always tell by the smile that they have, that their, their confidence has grown in such a short space of time. It's actually really good to see. And what you find if you're always praising them at every stage, even if it's something that's really small, it, it makes a massive difference in how somebody responds throughout the whole process, even if it's something that they found quite difficult as well. You know what? It's OK. It's fine. You're doing well. And even if they make a mistake, it's like, OK, let's just revisit it. And then once it's fixed, then it's almost like you can see that sigh of relief. But it's always about encouraging and saying, you know what, that's okay. Let's find, let's look at it a different way. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, very fully. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Jen. Sorry, oh, Jen, I was about to, I was just going to say there's a question in the chat. Did you see it in the chat? It's not on mine. Or is it? Is it a hand up? No, so it's a question. Um, Samantha, you, um, Samantha asked if there were copies of the lessons that we can use. I can't, I think because I've, <laughs> I've come out of teaching, I don't actually do lesson plans, but I'll do like an overview of the kind of project that I want to do. Because what I tend to do, I do mind maps and then I'll say, right, this is the project. This is what the aims are. This is what we're going to do. A lot of the projects that I do, it's, I do them quite often. So I tend not to write a lesson plan. But if anybody needs an overview of, of anything that I've done, I can send that out. The other thing is as well, if you was ever going to do anything in terms of electronics with somebody like Katronix, there are always online lesson plans that you can use and adapt with them as well. There's nothing wrong with just ask, giving them a phone call and just asking them for, um, again, with the freebies. It's Everybody loves a freebie. Uh, and then you can always adapt those lesson plans. But if anybody wants an overview, I can send that over to you. Thank you, Janet. That's very okay. generous of you to share because I know the lessons that you've devised yourself. So I really appreciate yeah, that. That's OK. Um, just going to do any other, any other questions. I think we've got time for one more. Oh. Um, 
Is it okay to ask a question? Hello. Go ahead, yeah. I'm inspiring Janet to hear what you're doing and uh, with the sort of energy and spirit and, and sort of position that you come to working with these young people. How long generally do, do you work with young people? Is it like, do they come on like one to four days or one week's program or do they stay with you for a long period of time? It depends on who I'm working with. Um because a lot of the projects that I do are either funded. If I've got funding, I can do like a um, a six-month program or a year's program. Or if it's something that it's a contract with an organisation, it can vary from half a day to possibly six weeks. I did some work with a primary school and I was with them for six months um, and only did like two hours a day for six months. But you can actually get quite a lot done. So I prefer having longer term projects because you can actually really build on their confidence and their skill levels a lot more when you've got more projects to work with them. When it's just a day, it's just something that's really short and snappy. Um, but I want to be able to work on their skill levels and their confidence a bit more. So I prefer personally to have more of a, a six week program rather than the one just for the day. But usually... If anybody books me, I'll say it's a minimum of four hours because you've got enough flexibility, even if it's only lasts for three hours. If there's somebody that's not working at the same place as somebody else, you've still got another hour to be able to help them out a little bit more. And they have a bit more one to one help as well. Okay. Thank you, Janet. And thank you, Busy Buttons, for that fabulous question. Thank you. Um, so moving along now. So Thank next you. up, we have a make along with Deborah Clark, who I first met in her role as a dynamic secondary school teacher on Make Your Future, which is our previous national schools project. Since that time, Deborah has set up her own craft business with a focus on leather work. And alongside this, she teaches her own workshop as and is involved in a number of other craft projects. Today, Deborah will be showing you how to use recycled leathers and other sheet material in your work with a focus on using hand tools. These can be adapted to use in your own classrooms, um, but they are just starting points and um, yeah, ideas to spring from. So Deborah, thank you for joining us. And I know we're going to have two cameras today. So we're going to start off so you can say a hello to everyone. And then we're going to link across to see your hands in, a, in another camera. So Deborah, over to you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, yes. You can, excellent. First of all, my name is Deborah. I'm a leather worker. I have a studio in Birmingham in the Jewelry Quarter. I also teach part-time um, and where I'm an art design teacher and I try to bring my practice into school when I'm able to. Currently, that's as enrichment, but I do try to use the skills with my students when I'm able to. As Joe said, I actually um, did make your future as a teacher in uh, in school. And then I think it was two years later, I was actually the maker that then went into the school. I've done a few bits and pieces with the Crafts Council. And similar to Janet, my um, background is in fashion and textiles. Um, I trained to teach in London, moved back to the Midlands. And basically the start of my leather journey was actually buying a pre-owned sewing machine and some leather and just going for it. I just started to develop a kind of, um, what's the best word, a uh, habit for buying expensive bags. And I thought, no, I can have a bag making it myself. So literally it was just starting from that, doing it in my own time, left school, set up my business um, officially. So the tax man knows that I'm in the system from 2017 and I'm, um, slowly crept back into school into education but hey ho at the moment it's a bit of both so I'm going to show you oh actually I'm where I just thought I made this bit of in which I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just use off cuts of leather I'm um, whether that's leather off I'm um, an old sofa or whether you know you're able to acquire some off cuts um if you if you know anyone that works in various different trades this is a really good one just trying to think ways if you know anyone that works in various trades 
and they have surplus materials, surplus offcuts. They are happy to donate stuff to school. I'm one of the other materials we're working with today is mountain board from my local framers. Again, they constantly give me stuff to take into school. Uh, there is scrap store, which I think is a nationwide thing where you can go and pay small amounts of money and you can walk out with bags of surplus from various different industries. Um, some of that being retail. I mean, I know that people have had mannequins, they've had road signs, I've got road signs here. There's all sorts that just gets given to charities to then be used by other um, groups or clubs or um, education. So let's start. I have to get my other camera, my other um, camera going. So bear with me. My other camera, my other phone. There we go. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the first thing I think I'm going to do is start with the mountain board. So I get off cuts of various sizes. I mean, it's much bigger than this, but they just tape up various different card. And what I'm going to do, I like working with geometric shapes. So just a ruler and safety ruler. That's all we use in school. I've got, because I'm in my studio, it's just cheap craft knives. And then just cut up various shapes. I'm just standing up for this one. I always say to students, we use knives. We start using knives with year nines. And I always say to students that, if you stand up and cut something, it's way better because you've got gravity working with you. So I'm just cutting, very shape, not really thinking too much about what shapes are cut, just going for it. A variety of shapes is good. Okay, this actual card, I'm. Um, as a plastic coat because it is actually sticky back. But what's quite nice is that we've got white and yellow. I'm one side of white and cream, should I say. So I'm just using up all of the card. So this is something that could be pre-done. If you're lucky to have a technician, then it's a great little job for a technician. And it's again, it's something you could do a bit at a time. You don't just have to spend hours cutting. Okay, so I've cut a few pieces. I'm now going to use Poscas, which are the best things ever because they work on absolutely every single surface. I just have gold and silver at the moment in the studio. And then this is all just about mark making. So mark making, Jan was talking about doodling earlier. You know, it just allows students, adults, anybody who's in your room to just have a little play. And I think playing is really, really important because it's it's just something you do from when you from when you first come into the world, right? You're old enough to be able to to play, but we just forget to play. We forget to just go go for it and to be free. So there's one. Of course, I prepared some others earlier, which I'll show you. There's one there. I've got lots of others. So just various different te various different textures, various different marks. I'm going to do a couple more. Okay, so I've got gold, I've got silver, and I'm working with both sides, so it doesn't matter. I should have said silver. Just do more of a scratchy one. So absolutely everybody can do this. The pasta dry quite quickly, which is good. So you don't have to wait forever for things to dry. I like to apply paint and various different textures to my leather. And I've got a couple of them, ones that I use here, which is Feeblings, which is really, really good. And I will show you, demonstrate that in a minute. So basically Posca is perfect for every single surface. Um, you could use, I mean, if you've got acrylic paint, if you're using cardboard, wood, et cetera, of course you could use acrylic paint. Okay, yeah, I'll stick with this one. And I just think, just do, do 
do things that the pen naturally wants to do. So hold on to it. You may get an ink splodge in a minute, but it's just about creating surface and texture. Uh, let it dry. I think that one's pretty much dried already, so I'll just pop that over there. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, actually, I didn't show you what I made. My what I made earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it. So this is just off cuts of leather that I'm was actual job. It was for theatre cafe. So I made menu covers and then I've just had odd little random offcuts. So what I've done is I've just joined them with paper clips and I created a um, willow kind of circle. I think you can see that there, just kind of got some twine made, joined it together. Of course, soak the willow first. And then that, actually, let me hold it like that, that, as a first player, first having a go at just creating connections with offcuts can become so many different things or could then be developed and worked into something else. So what we're going to do now is just connect. So I use this pretty much every single time I use leather and it, with, Leather goods, it's known as an awl. It's also known as a bradle. I think it's a bradle when you're shoe making, but you can use um, either a sharp needle or a kebab skewer. So I did actually put that down on the list because that will do exactly the same thing. I've got a putting mat here, but I do also like to use just a little board. But I mean, I'll just show you, it, does e it works equally well making a hole. Let's see, making a hole in your cutting mat as it does actually into, let's check that there, as it does into the sign cutting board. Okay. And then I, I think a really good connector is paper clips. I actually just got these from school. Got a little project on. Can I have a few paper clips, please? Like, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> So it literally is just whole like that and then connect it up the next bit. Let's see, let's go with that one. So, yeah, if you've got a little bit more experience, you're thinking about where you would place the anchor point. But, you know, you're just having a play and it is all about the make first approach. So don't think too much about anchor points. And and I think that, I should speak this way, you know, students kids teenagers will just figure out that maybe that wasn't the best place to put the hole so there we go we can just twist that and it's quite nice that you get different shapes with the connectors i mean you could pull that right in or just leave it quite loose because you're creating positive and negative shapes alone in the wire and it's nice and malleable i'm going to add another one let's go, go with a plane side so now i'm maybe going to think a little bit more about the anchor point so i'll probably just put it there and then open it up doesn't really matter which side you start with first and then just it literally is just bend it like so I'm going to show you something else while I'm just doing this. Because alternative connectors could be twine, could be raffia, could be wool, whatever you've got in that art cupboard. But what I found to be really, really easy are these um, bauble hooks. And I found, I got these in the pound shop. There's 150 pieces. They're so malleable and so nice to work with. So if you're working with younger students or pupils, you can line, they're super, super easy. So you can see, do that that way around. It literally is the easiest thing to bend. Let's 
prepare that one. And what's quite nice with these as well is that you've got short lengths and you've got long lengths. So you can play with the um, the connectors, the length of the connectors. So let's just do that. Oops. Okay, so there we go. But really nice and easy, really nice and easy way to connect two pieces together. So I'm just going to carry on with a few more of these. I've got a piece of um again willow. Did say on the list it got, totally forgot I had some willow here. You could use bamboo, which is like a bit of um the garden bamboo, or you could use um. What was the other thing I said? Dowling rod, if you've got a bit of dowling rod, if you're DT or art, you know, there's so many bits and pieces at the back of the art cupboard or the art drawer or whatever. Just go through it and just see what's there. Okay, so I think I'll do one more. I think I'll do silver one on there. So my aim is to start, once I've connected this one, is to start uh, to add to this, like I said, this long piece of willow that I've got. Okay. So I just start on this one, the hole. Okay, so. You can see how easy it's really nice because it's quite quick to grow as well. And I know that young people like to see things grow. Want to see that you want to see the progress sooner than later. So what I would do is you can either use the wire here, which I quite like, to fix it to can you, sorry, I'm coming out of shot there. To fix it to the um the willow or you could create a link and then attach it with the raffia or the twine or whatever you've got in that cupboard. There we go, so that's a start, so that's quite, you can see that. Okay, so it's just the case of basically just building on, on that. So let's see, I'll do, let's go check the time. Okay, we're good. I'll keep going. And then I'll do, I've got an earring and then I'll come back. So literally, I'm just going to keep building these lamps. Does everyone, anyone have any questions while I'm working? While you're working? We're just checking the the chat and scanning down. I can see the busy buttons team are hard at work creating. Are they fantastic? No questions at the moment. So, no um, Deborah, presumably you could do this as like a big sort of team exercise. Yeah. Where a student can make one strip and then you could add them yeah. all together as one artwork. And... Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, you could actually like, let me bring the circle back one back here. You know, you could make rings. Actually, I thought a really good ring is, uh, I, know, I don't know if you buy lots of scarves, but you know scarves are present, they're sold on rings with a little hook. So you could actually use that or you could use the willow, which I think is a really nice way to make a ring. And you could connect, you could make multiple, you could do multiples. You could, the same with, this you know with the straight piece you could again add other layers so you could do something that you actually hang to the ceiling and you know and it could be in the reception area of school where you know it could be a whole year group I mean it starts from being for one person straight through to a class straight through to a year group you can take it however make it however big you want I mean I guess the thing with school it would just be with the reception it'd just be temporary because uh, dependent on the actual material, and I'm just thinking the the flame proofness and stuff like that. But generally, you know, it could be something that's built on quite easily. And Deborah, do you work with your local scrap store? I'm just thinking about um, some of these I plastic have, items or yeah, paper clips. I have you come across those in a in a scrap store. 
I have done in the past. That local one has actually moved. Um, I've oh, there's been everything. I mean, I've had wadding, fabric, plastic sheeting, plastic felt. I'm just trying to think what else. Some road signs. <laughs> uh, what else? String, thread. There's been absolutely everything. There's been everything. So you can get lots of materials for next to nothing. And if we've got um, teachers joining us this evening that haven't worked with a scrap store before, any tips yeah. or how do you sign up to one? Just, I mean, it's just, it really is as simple as going online, seeing if you've got a local one. And if you have, just getting in contact because I think they all, they work slightly differently. So my local one used to be £10. I think you paid £10 a month and you could go and have go twice for the month and take you know two bags full or something like that but then it changed to I'm um, per visit so they were I think they work they work slightly differently and in fact when it moved locally it moved from one site to another they actually open more of a shop so you could just go in and it was like going into a shop so you could purchase whatever you needed um, and smaller quantities you didn't have to have a bin bag full of stuff But there are so many people, so many organisations and businesses that are happy to donate surplus, surplus, whatever. It's just getting in contact with people. But like I said, if you know, if you know, if you know, if there's anyone in the family or, you know, you've got friends or whoever who work for, I don't know, it could be I'm um, someone who does upholstery. It could be someone who works in the car industry, believe it or not. You know, I mean. They say they don't donate, but they do. They just don't advertise it. Thank you. And if people have got any other questions, you can add them in the chat yeah. if you don't want to ask in right. person. And I guess it would be a chance to talk about kind of single use plastics and recycling with your group as well. If, um, you know, people are collecting at home and bringing things and kind of like thinking about what they use as a family. When you were making, Deborah, um, a maker yeah. popped into my head, Liz Bone, a jeweller, who's creating pieces out of oats, milk, ring pulls. And she posted on Instagram oh, well, recently thanking yeah. everyone that kind of contributed with their it. ring pulls. So it's um, yeah, a nice approach. Yeah, no, like I said, every you know, lots of people will donate. They're happy to collect or, and donate. It's just asking. It. It, it really is just asking um, people to do whatever it is. I mean, I know at school we've had people um, collect crisp packets. I'm just trying to think what else. Crisp packets over the years, but more recently crisp packets. Um, I think Chris Packets tends to be the main one actually at school because it's that shrink, you know, when you can shrink them, <laughs> shrink them and make jewelry. I mean, I'm trying to think who did that. There were quite a few, but there's been quite a few um, designers who have done that over the years. But Chris Packets, brilliant. I think we have a shrinky dink resource that Tatty Divine created for us for what really? did, uh, yeah, yeah. craft cup tutorials. I think that's yeah. still on our website. Perhaps we'll try and dig that out and add it to yeah. the chat. But yeah, it's a great one. Yeah, shrink pack. Quick crisp pack is a brilliant. Let me go here's another one. That's a little bit sharp. What I didn't mention was I'm on the list was pliers. For, I mean, eh, I wouldn't use a jewelry pliers, just use standard. Standard pliers, not jewellers ones, because jeweler one, jewellers ones you should keep as neat as possible. You don't want any scratches on those. Let's have a look. Sorry, I had to shut again. So I've just done two lines. Okay, I'll do one more and then I'll move on to 
I'm earrings. Oh, Janet's just added that she's made a tote bag from Capri Sun packets. Oh, okay, cool. That would love to see. Yeah. So oh, nice. I think we have a um a piece in our handling collection made out of um juice packs as well. Um juice packs. perhaps we can share that as well in the in the resources. Okay. I might put that one to the side to post it directly on top. Are we all getting on? We just got a thumbs up from Busy Buttons. It's nice to, <laughs> nice to be able to do some work ourselves sometimes. You only work with the young people and they exactly. do a lot of work. Exactly. It is. It's so important because we just don't have time to be, to, to play, to have fun, to be creative ourselves. As educators, I'm. I I recently brought some flowers into school for I'm um, well as backup for my I'm um, year eleven art students because this year for the first time they've decided to give them a mark. So they did a mark for one day, and I just thought there'll be some who won't actually be prepared. I'm. Um, and luckily, I, they were, I was so I was so so happy because they actually came all prepared, which was great. But I thought, right, I'm going to use these flowers. So I took some photos, and yesterday I was on Photoshop. I'm, you know, having a little play myself, and I just thought, just don't do it. And I've, it's actually for me. I mean, I'll use it as an example, but I just thought I'm doing it for me for a change. So there we go. I've got three, three lines. And I could just do another couple more. And then I'd say that's pretty much, I think that would be pretty much done then. But what I'm going to do is move on to jewellery, well, move on to an earring and just show how easy it is and then come back to that. So I have absolutely loads of offcuts of leather, having worked with leather since roughly about 2015 and I don't like throwing away I just have the little the little ends and bits I'll throw away but the rest of it I just hold on to I have been selling over since lockdown I've sold quite a lot actually so it's not I don't have as much as I used to but I still do have some so I'm um, and this the earrings which I did show you I usually make with year eight as a um extra curricular activity but oh, let's have a look so with the paints like I said before these are brilliant and they're water-based so you can use these in school when I've you done when I've painted in school in the past we just use the regular acrylics but these can be used in a school environment they range from <laughs> excuse me they range from sort of four pound fifty through to eight pounds. I've seen them online, so that but they're easily easily on available. So it literally I'm just going to mix up a little bit. Is that in shot? Oh yeah, it's in shot. Okay, 
So and a little does go a long way with this stuff. Okay, I'm just gonna we try to just use the primaries at school throughout the whole of the year groups and get them to constantly make mixed colours. And even year tens will say, Miss, how do I make orange again? And I'm like, come on now. But directly in. Okay. So this actual paintbrush, I have um I cut into paintbrushes so that I can get marks. So you might be able to see, I don't know how close up. I've actually cut right through the center, which gives I'll just do it on the edge, which gives a kind of oh, I can't see it too well because I think the brush was a little bit wet, but it gives a kind of arrow. So that's the kind of thing that I do in my own practice. Is just chop into brushes and use lots of different everyday things to make textures and marks. Can you see that? Let me bring that up. Deborah, we had a question about um, the materials you're using. Is that acrylics? Is it a, like a special kind of acrylic? Yeah, just it's, it acrylic? yeah it's, it's called acrylic dye. I don't know why they call it dye because it is actually like a. It's more of a paint. Oh, it's more of a paint, and it's called Feeblings, and it's readily available. It's an American company, but pretty much most people sell it online that have anything to do with um, anything to do with leather, painting leather. Yeah, so that is okay. I tend to use more the acrylic dyes. I tend to use more, um, generally I would use a lighter tone with that colour, but this stuff is brilliant and it's really flexible. It does work really, really well. And this is a little bit watered down, so I would use it a bit thicker because the brush was, um, was, was wet. But you can see, here's one I prepared earlier, you can see that's with the Posca pen. I will bring my hand down a bit. And you can see that that's actually quite nice because you can control the actual marks really well with the Posca, of course, as opposed to the paintbrush. So I'm going to do, I mean, I've got some little dashes, did some little dashes there with silver, but I'm going to use, I like dashes, stripes, dashes and dots, that's me. So with this off cut of pink, I'm just gonna do a few dots, dot it around. I mean, oh yeah, I just thought Black Friday, you could get deals. I'm pretty sure there'll be some Posca deals out there somewhere. If you've got any budget, if you have any available budget. I think I might just leave that as that actually. Okay, and then I think what I'm gonna do with the white, although I may not use it, is I'm just gonna use the tip of the brush. Sorry, tip, yeah, tip of the brush to make some bigger dots on the white. Cotton buds are really good for this. This one will take a little bit longer to dry. Posca dries really quickly. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to use that as part of my earring. I think I'm going to cut into this. With a line. Just leave that. Just do, let's see. That. So I'm just going to play with where that might sit. I think it's just some that in the air, I think. Yeah, I think I'll stick with that. 
not quite dry. It's just dragged a little bit. And you can see that's dragged. Just have to let these things dry for a bit. Okay, so I think I'm, gonna, I'm happy with that. That can be my earring. So it literally is. Back to the oar. I've got two jump rings. What I usually tend to do is use a larger jump ring. Can you see there? It's a larger jump ring that's going through the material and the smaller one is the one that I then add to the big one. And then we've got the actual hook. So I'm just going to, the more really important is not to make the hole too close to the edge because the leather may well pull. So I'd kind of go around about there. You could glue it, but don't need to glue. I'm just gonna go straight for it. And be mindful of that distance from there to there as well. So maybe that could do with just moving up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to snip that off. I'll just put that on. So, oh, pieces. so I just straighten that off. And then put the hole about there. Yeah, that's better. So just a hole. If you have managed to get some leather and it's quite thin, what you can do is just, um, you know, glue a piece of thin card on the back just to firm it up a bit. Okay, so flat nose jewellers pliers, two pairs. I mean, if you've got the one you can use, just try using the one to open. So you literally hold and then you pull it open like that. But if you're a professional, and it's all about those passing on those professional skills. You hold the actual ring like that and you never pull apart. You just kind of move it like that, that kind of action. And I always find it's just easier. Take off each piece, put it shit through, push the other one through like so. Okay, and then you tighten it back up, holding the two together, oops, like so. Make sure it's nice and neat. If it's not neat, there, just clamp it together, a little bit like that. You've got the one bit, and then you open up the smaller one. Similar, so it's like that. Push that on, hold it. The actual hook, just do that. Close it. Oops. Let's see. Close it together, just a little bit more. And then you may find you need to just do that, just to tighten it up. And again, just flatten it out like that. I mean, they're fun little earrings, you know, don't have to worry about soldering or anything like that. The most important thing is to make sure that that is a neat joint there. And there you've got your sweet little earring that's taken hardly any time at all. Great way to use up off cut well off cuts of anything. I mean, this could be off cuts of wood, could be off cuts of acrylic. Like I said, with the Poscas, you know, they work on all surfaces. So I've been making these with year eights maybe about about three years as a little um extracurricular activity, and then we usually sell them. So it becomes part of an enterprise project because I talk about you know, I'm um, costs and read, you know, markup and all those other bits. And they kind of, they either sell them at like a school production we did last summer. And then we've sold them at, um, I think a summer fair, something like that. So, and it's a good way for them to understand, you know, retail markup. And then also they decide which charity the money's going to be um, donated to. 
So I'll put that to the side and then I'm just going to carry on with doing the last line of Let's see what I think this last one's just going to be plain for now, so I think I've run out. I've run out of all my pre -mails. So you know, when you when you've done the making, the make first approach, you can actually think about how could I then apply that? What could that what could that be? I mean, this could quite easily be, you know, jewelry. If that was short, well, it could be jewelry. It's quite it could be quite long conceptual jewelry. If it was smaller, then it could be something with the connect. Thinking about the connectors, you could use jump rings. That could be off cuts of wood. You could use jump rings, jewelry jump rings, which are inexpensive. I mean, the ones I use are silver plated. If you wanted to go even cheaper, you could just buy, you know, really cheapy ones off eBay or I'm um, not so much Etsy, more eBay. And, you know, and actually and actually sell them as a creative, make it into an enterprise project. Or it could just be, just be a project that you know is then photographed and form part of manipulating because really what you are doing as well is manipulating materials um so it could be the you know you could create chandeliers you create ceiling um hangings wall hangings earrings pendants it could create so many different so many different things Any more questions? Just have a look. Yeah, I think before we open it up to everyone's going to share what they've made or ask questions. Um, I have one, Deborah, about thinking about um, plant-based alternatives. If you have students that uh -huh. want to explore, obviously there's pleather options, but are there any plant-based materials that link to leather that we could look at? I'm at this stage. I'm going to say. I mean, the we, you know, the the faux leather, or vegan leather, or you know, it's got multiple names. It's really plastic. <laughs> I'm and when we, I mean, it, of course, if you get off cuts, then great, use them. But as an alternative to leather, I'm sorry, I'm pro leather. I am going to say pro leather all the time because as a material, it is sustainable in the respect that. It's a byproduct of the meat industry. It's um if it's made if you make it into products and you make it well, then those products are going to last a long time. Also, you know, you can repair them yourself or you can get someone else to repair them so that you know it keeps going. So the, the things like the mushroom and pineapple alternatives, which have been I'm um, worked on at the moment you know they're quite expensive they're quite expensive to purchase um and I think I don't know I think I think alternatives are important but I think sometimes you know the actual natural products that are out there just get a bad rap you know so me personally I'd st I'm, I'm sticking I'm sticking with leather but I'm interested if someone can give me you know mushroom based I'm sort of leather alternative. I'll give it a go, definitely. But you know, I mean, bamboo is brilliant because it, you know, again, great sustainable material because it um it grows so quickly, and it grows so quickly, and you know, and it has really good properties for fabrics, as in fabrics that you wear. For um, you know, I know they use bamboo quite a lot for chopping boards and stuff so it has a lot of i'm um, not anti is it antiseptic or antifungal qualities so i think me personally i'm going to use you know the stuff that's already there that you know is doing good anyway 
but like I said, if somebody was to give me some mushroom, a mushroom on flat material and said, give it a go and play with it. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, I'm not going to change what I do and move over to, to vegan leather because, you know, the leather as in the uh, leather that's made from an animal as opposed to a laboratory is, you know, is doing great things. So... Was that the kind of answer you're expecting to hear, Jo? <laughs> yeah, I just thought it's, it's something nice to bring up, isn't it? Because I know some of the teachers might be thinking about it and, and a lot of oh, makers yeah, no, are exactly. exploring it as an area. Definitely. And also because we have um, we have Bran Howell here this evening as well from the Eden Project. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, something we've been talking about as well. Thank yeah. you, Deborah. No, so definitely. we're just scanning along, see if you've got any other questions um, and if anyone would like to share their makes. Um, Deborah, I wonder if we could switch to your other camera now, yeah, just yeah. so that if you're answering questions, people we can see you I'll as well. Come, yeah, I'll come back in. Let me see. Bear with me. Just gotta come back the other way. Oh no! What? Okay, hopefully I should be in in a minute. Leave this one. I'm back. Oh, hello. It's good to see your face again. <laughs> um, so I wonder if um, Busy Buttons, I know you, I can see you on the screen and you've been busy making away would you like to share or ask questions and other people that don't have their cameras on please ask questions or, or share as well if you if you would like oh nice is that an embroidery hoop yeah that's right yep and then right. you can and then so we just as oh, so you've used the paper you've used the paper clip as it is yeah I like yeah. it okay cool that was it and let's see we'll just get this on just finishing the last one the earring um, oh a bit fiddly yeah it's yeah. it's a little bit fiddly the first time you use them but then okay great oh oh we've got some movement there so you have you pinned it so we've uh put a jump ring there oh you put so jump okay yeah so basically just a piece like that. Yeah. And then you connect. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then just turned it. Yeah, jumped it together. Okay. Now, and then put a jump ring together. Yeah, because it gives it that sort of three D movement, doesn't it? Especially as it's moving. Nice. Because it is a, it has a core. Um. Uh, can you hear? Can yeah, you hear me? Can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because there's like a. It's like um. You know the coarse side of the leather, the the rough yeah. side of the. Leather. Yeah. And I like the the shiny a bit. So yeah. Yeah. Some, just with Sharpie because we didn't have any um, pink in shares. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was a sampler. Yeah, it was a sampler piece. So it oh, came... oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With it. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> we're wearing that. <laughs> now, well done. You put it on. Oops. It came up. I have to tighten that a bit. That's it. Correct use of pliers, jewelers pliers. Well done. There we go. There we go. Yeah, fiddly. It's, yeah, it can be fiddly. There we are. Okay, Fab. Great. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> yeah, good. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Busy Buttons. Does, does anyone else want to share what they've made or, or ask any questions? Um, <laughs> and in the last few minutes, if anyone has questions for Janet as well, go back to both.
Just checking the chat as well. Sure. So um, I was going to ask a question about the leather. It's how lightweight is it? You know, how big could you go with those earrings? Oh, generally, generally, no height, no longer than I'm um, shoulder. Because I find people don't like to wear long. They don't really like wearing things that are too long unless it's really fancy glam to go out. But something like this you can wear every day. Most people like to wear things that they can wear every day rather than to to I'm glam and then the thing is as well I mean you know young people will want to make things that you know are generally identical but you know it could just be one you don't have to make exactly the same because sometimes it can be quite especially if you're using little offcuts it can be quite difficult to make identical so it could just be you know just the one and, and the other thing I was interested in was um you know, them selling them as a product, that kind of enterprise project. Yeah. How did they respond to kind of like pricing up the work and learning it. more about, you know, the business side of things? Yeah, they love it because it's something that they don't always do. Well, they hardly do at all. So, um, you know, it, it, it brings maths in. It brings literacy in because I usually get them to do some advertising materials to actually sell the product so that, you know, if they do get a bit stuck then, you know, they've got a sign saying, you know, what it is that they've made, how they made it, actually, you know, the cost, et cetera. It, it enables them to, to be confident. It grows confidence in speaking to people, to actually taking money, um, having to work out the change. It's all those little things that we take for granted as makers when we're selling um, that, you know, they've got that first-hand experience of actually just kind of, you know doing it I mean some of them are really shy doing it but then you know you see that confidence grow even just as the evening goes on so so really 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 powerful I think because they realize how long it takes to make something and then how much it, you know how much they can get for it at the end and then we also look at you know how much things are, are in say accessorized or you know, Claire's or whatever, because of course it's not really high price points that they're selling at. And then also how much they would pay for something, you know, they're, what they think it's worth. So it covers so many things. Thank you. Oh, we, um, we have a question from Nicola in the chat. Great yeah. question. Where do you get your silver plated jump rings? Okay. I thought this question might come actually next door because I'm in the jewelry quarter. Um, but you again, re easily ready available um, on online. You know, I get I get quite a few bits and pieces off eBay. You know, the usual places. But generally, jewelry related things, I just buy in the jewelry quarter. And is there a, like particular stores like things like Cooksons or? I, say that again, sorry, Jan. Particular stores. Would you get them from Cooksons or are would are there like other suppliers that you would recommend? Um, Cookson's is brilliant. Cookson's is just up the road. Um, has actually Cookson's is probably a good one because he, they have such a wide catalogue. Um, but there are there are others. Thank you, Nicola. Great question. Um, another one I was thinking about. Say if you had a group of twenty and you had um, like one braddle or one owl, could you use like a really thick sewing needle, or would that not be kind of like strong enough to go not through? Ever. I mean, it's got to be a really sharp needle for leather, but, you know, I, I, I'm I, a firm believer that even if you buy, you know, say one or that can share between two or three people, then just slowly in, invest in the in the actual tools because they're going to last you years. I mean, you may not be at the school years later, but they'll be there for the next person to use. So it's about slowly building up. I mean, this this one... Um, it's probably about seven quid, something like that. And you know, I mean, when I've when workshops, I've slowly bought, slowly bought a vent, you know, bought like four, 
then I bought a couple more to make it to a six, then I've made a couple more to make it to eight. So I've slowly done it, you know, and you can do exactly the same with with um the school budgets, just slowly build. I mean, um you will find that with the with the players, they do do um the the ones for teenagers and they're usually pink because they're only for girls. But I'm um, you know, and they're a lot cheaper and they're generally smaller, but I just think just buy the actual ones, the kind of um, entry level stuff, because it's, you know, it's still a good price. It's a good price. It's probably better quality than the stuff that they make for kids. And um, and they last forever, as long as they're looked after, they last forever. Thank you. Thank you for answering everyone's questions. That's really great. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes to go, so I want to do some formal thank yous um, and just round up. But I'm just scanning down just to make sure that I haven't missed anyone out on the chat. Mm -hmm. no, good, that's everyone. So um, thank you so much to Janet and Deborah for joining us today and sharing your knowledge and experience. I think you're two shining examples of um, people with portfolio careers where making and educating can go hand in hand and you can be masters of both. Thank you again to all of our teachers joining us for taking time out of your busy day to support your students and your schools. And lastly, thank you to our supporters, the Eden Project, and shout out to Bra um, Bran, who's here this evening with us, um, and Hobbycraft, NSEAD, and Access Art. The next support session is on Wednesday, the 6th of December at four o'clock, and the third CPD session, and the final one, will be on the 31st of January, same time. And we aim to get the materials list to you early in the new year for that one, so you have a bit, little bit longer to gather things. And please help us to share craft school material well with your colleagues in other schools around the UK. So it's a challenge. Obviously, there's awards and prizes at the end, but um, we do really want to get the, the word out there and um, like get as many schools and young people engaged with making as possible. So thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Um, are we are we able to get one more question in? Yes, please do. Please do. Yes, sorry, I, I just wondered because obviously you can jewelry equipment can be super expensive, and then as you said, an all and and a pair of pliers are really cheap. What do you find, or like with your experience over the years, what are the tools and equipments? That you invest mm -hmm. in use the most by young people i say age five to 15. what is five, the five to 15 oh gosh um like in general i would say oh it's mixed oh that's a tough one actually because it's just the regular stuff that you've already got i'd say it's the regular stuff you've already got i mean with regards to like the alls i bring i bring them into school when i use them because I actually left, oh God, long story, I actually left my school and then went back part-time. So I tend to, um, we've got pliers at school from when we did the Make Your Future project, which I use um, when, I'm, when I'm doing the earrings. So other bits and pieces, the all I bring in, because I didn't actually use those, we, we did a, um, something else. Um, I would say, I'd say keep by pliers. If you're thinking of, you know, anything jewellery related, remember we can use lots of different materials. I would say pliers, 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 then at all, then oars. Or just, you know, buy three sets of pliers and three oars and see how you get on with that and then grow on that, depending on how many actual young people you're working with. Pl young, I'd say, um, I'm just trying to think what age. Seven, eight year olds, I think you'd be fine with these. Any younger, I wouldn't use this mm -hmm. at all. I think all the holes have to be made. Um, I would use an all from about eight, nine upwards. Thank you. And if you have any other kind of jewelry questions, like follow up with us, um, send us an email, we can answer any of those sort of specialist questions as well. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Janet. Yeah.